It seems in this day and age, it's never been harder to stay focused with all the things in this world fighting for control of our emotions. This performance-driven society has ushered in a new age of anxiety, leaving many wondering why depression and suicide rates are skyrocketing. You see, what many don't know or refuse to believe is that there is an enemy prowling who wants to sift you as wheat. And he knows that he can't curse what God has blessed. So he's trying to draw your attention away instead. He wants to throw every distraction he can your way, anything to keep you from looking up and receiving God's grace. I mean, you can see it if you just look around. Everyone walking, even driving with their heads bowed down. Not because they're bent over on their knees in prayer, but because they're checking whose Instagram post did better. Comparing and living in competition with one another, instead of tearing down strongholds, we tear down each other. All of this competition is killing our contentment, our envy and greed giving rise to resentment. And the devil knows a house divided against itself cannot stand, so he's desperately trying to play all the cards in his hand. And now, it's never been easier to throw in the towel, especially when it looks like everyone's got it all figured out. This world has told you life is a race to the top, but those who made it will tell you their greatest gain became their greatest loss. Because what does it profit a man to gain the world and lose his soul? Yet the enemy wants you to make that your life's greatest goal. And yeah, this life's a race, not to the top, but to the end. And how far you go is based on how low you're willing to descend. Because the least in this world will be the greatest in the kingdom. So what good is all the fame in chasing that illusion of freedom? Really what it does is make you a slave when that's exactly what Christ came down here to change. And with all this comparing, criticizing, and complaining you do, you start to neglect what God put inside of you. You forget his word and become insecure, chasing people and things he never created you for. See, because one of the greatest tactics of the enemy is getting you to question your own identity, to make you feel worthless and like you're not enough. So you spend your whole life chasing after empty and useless stuff so that you choose what feels best in the heat of the moment. Then come to find out the consequences of your actions are permanent. Searching for anything to fill that gaping black hole when God gave up his one and only son to make you whole. And I know it would be easy for me to stand up here and start speaking Christianese, to recite all the cliches you've heard for all these years. But let me tell you, God's word is more than pretty poetry. Those pages came from a tree inspired by Calvary. The blood of Jesus poured out as ink for the world to read. And here's what he has to say about you and me. You were fearfully and wonderfully made before the foundations of the earth were ever laid. His plans for your life have already been made. Before he formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you. Knowing all the mistakes you ever make, he still chose to pursue you. You are a chosen generation. You are the crown of his creation. And by no fault, you will never be forsaken. You are royalty. You are a king's kid. And your identity is found in only him. He is closer than each and every breath. How else would he know the number of hairs on your head? So don't you see? The enemy wants to keep you deceived, to shift your focus off of God and onto material things. But I urge you, seek first the kingdom of God, and he will give you the desires of your heart. <laughs> Store your treasures up in heaven, when moth and dust don't corrupt, because soon we'll see the place that he's prepared for us. The things we see now are temporary, but those we can't see are eternal. Don't throw that all away because you were too focused on the carnal. Amen. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind, not conforming to the world's plans that are as fleeting as time. Set your eyes on the prize that is Jesus Christ, who for the joy set before him despised the shame, who cleansed us of our sins by, re by removing our blame, who took our place and gave us a new name, who now holds the keys to death, hell, and the grave, who loves you so much more than your words could ever say, and who one day in heaven will meet face to face. So fix 
fixed your focus on what really matters and run this race with endurance, which produces strength of character. So when that day finally comes, you can hear him say, welcome home, my child, well done.